Five signs of a magnesium deficiency you need to know about. All right. First of all, if you're not supplementing with magnesium, you absolutely need to be. There are actually thousands of chemical reactions happening in our bodies every day that require magnesium. It's really one of two essential electrolytes for your heart, your gut, your brain health, and your muscle health as well as your mood. So what does it do? Well, magnesium controls the movement stability of cell membranes, particularly muscle cell membranes, including in your heart and your gut. The problem is most people really are not getting enough magnesium in their diet. And yet, when you go to your doctor, they will more than likely check a magnesium level in your blood and they'll tell you that it's absolutely normal. Why? Well, magnesium levels in the blood are kept constant at all costs. The same with the other electrolyte, potassium. So you will suck magnesium out of the inside of cells to always have enough magnesium in your bloodstream. The problem is that doesn't tell you what your intracellular magnesium is. Now, I got interested in this many, many years ago as a heart surgeon. And we noticed that magnesium levels would plummet after heart surgery. And we would actually have to give people intravenous magnesium sulfate a couple of grams IV every four to six hours to keep their heart rhythm regulated. Magnesium is incredibly important for keeping skipped heartbeats under control. It's incredibly important for suppressing atrial fibrillation. And as many people find out during the summer, it's incredibly important for preventing muscle cramps. And all of these are because you'll maintain your blood level of magnesium at the cost of the intracellular level of magnesium where really the rubber meets the road. So that's why I learned very early in my career how many people are profoundly deficient in magnesium. So your blood level is really a poor indication of your magnesium level and your magnesium stores. So what are some indications? Well, one of the most obvious ones is constipation. Your gut wall is a muscle, and it's lots of layers of muscle. And these muscles are very sensitive to magnesium. How sensitive? Well, milk of magnesia is concentrated magnesium. And if you will, magnesium in concentrated levels really wakes up the muscles in your gut and, of course, moves your bowel. So constipation is actually a really good sign, among others, that you have a low magnesium level. Secondly, irritability and low mood. There is actually some pretty good evidence that magnesium helps with mild anxiety and even mild forms of depression. Plus, Magnesium helps you get better sleep, which can definitely help your mental health. I joke with my patients when I ask them to take magnesium before they go to bed that it will absolutely improve their mood, it will absolutely help with their sleep, and they won't beat their dog or they won't beat their husband or wife anymore. And we have a good chuckle. The reason we have a good chuckle is because this irritability and low mood is prevalent in our society. And I submit to you that for a large part of it, magnesium levels being low contribute to this. So that's number two. Now, sleep problems per se. Magnesium is well known for producing not only a quicker onset of sleep, but a better quality of sleep 
along with deeper sleep and less tiredness during the day. In fact, studies of older adults also found that magnesium supplementation helped with them falling asleep faster, and it actually protected them against waking up earlier than intended. I can tell you in my practice that particularly older adults have some real issues with not so much going to sleep, but waking up at 3.30, 4 o'clock in the morning and not being able to get back to sleep. And again, studies have shown that this is partially responsible because of low magnesium levels. An insomnia study, adults in their 60s actually slept longer, spent less time awake in bed, and received lower scores on an insomnia score when taking a magnesium supplement versus a placebo. Now, a number of my patients initially complain of restless leg syndrome. And while this is multifactorial, and a lot of it comes from the gut-brain access, research shows that magnesium is really able to help with this, especially if you develop restless legs during pregnancy. Now, magnesium versus melatonin. They both start with M. They sound similar. Melatonin, of course, is what's known as the sleep hormone. But if you've read any of my recent books, you know that melatonin is actually an incredibly important mitochondrial repair hormone that repairs mitochondria and is actually a significant mitochondrial uncoupler. I use timed release melatonin in concert with magnesium in my patients with insomnia and in my patients who have absolute trouble falling asleep. I don't use immediate release melatonin. Yes, it will help put you to sleep, but unfortunately, it wears off in a couple of hours and you wake up wide awake, and that's not exactly what you want. I mentioned this before, but number four is muscle cramps. Muscle cramps happen. As I mentioned, magnesium and potassium are muscle cell membrane wall stabilizers. And potassium and magnesium actually tell a muscle whether to contract or relax. And I actually, in heart surgery, use high-dose potassium to literally stop the heart during heart surgery where we can work on it. So it depolarizes the membrane and stops contractions. Well, it's the same way of balancing the amount of potassium and magnesium in a cell and outside of a cell that starts this. So if you have muscle cramps when you're exercising, or if you have muscle cramps when you're sleeping, better yet, if you have muscle cramps on a ketogenic diet, a really strong side effect of a ketogenic diet, what you didn't know is that potassium and magnesium are stored with glycogen, the storage form of sugar, in our muscles. And when you go on a ketogenic diet, you not only deplete all the glucose, but you also deplete muscle glycogen. And it just so happens that potassium and magnesium leave with the glycogen, which means there's now no longer any of this protective membrane stabilizing compound in your muscles, and that's where those uncomfortable cramps come from. So if you're getting nighttime leg cramps, if you're getting cramps while running, this is a potassium and magnesium deficiency staring you in the face. You absolutely need to supplement with at least magnesium I prefer a combination of potassium and magnesium supplements, which are readily available. All right, number five, I alluded to this as well, heart palpitations. If you're having palpitations, skipped heartbeats, if you've been told by your doctor based on a Holter monitor or a Vio patch 
that you have extra beats, that you have extra tickles in your heart, or if you can feel these palpitations, this is absolutely a sign that you're both magnesium and potassium deficient. And in fact, when I supplement my patients with potassium and magnesium, aspartate, which is one of the forms, this is actually my first line of treatment for patients with palpitations. And it works remarkably well. How do I know it works? Because for 40 years in the clinic, in the ICU, this is the way we control these extra beats. So, and the oral forms work fine. It's not an emergency to get them under control like in the ICU, but in my practice in cardiology patients, currently it works just super. So that's five really good signs that you're magnesium deficient. The good news is, as I mentioned, it's easy to supplement with. There are plenty of good options for getting these electrolytes into you. Electrolyte drinks. I happen to like a drink called Element. It's spelled L-M-N-T. And I happen to make an electrolyte replacement drink called Vital Recharge. Now, an old trick was called Epsom salts, and you would soak your feet or take a bath in Epsom salts. What you were actually doing was soaking in magnesium, and you absorb magnesium extremely well through your skin. And a fun fact, some people are very sensitive, particularly women, to oral magnesium products, and you get loose bowels. But we still need to get more magnesium in you, and the great trick is I can switch you over to magnesium salts either in a bath with Epsom salts or there are now what are called magnesium oil sprays. The reason they're called magnesium oils, they're not oils, but they feel greasy. But you can just spray them on your tummy. You can spray them on your legs before you go to bed and really works, but you won't get the side effect of loose bowels. Now, magnesium citrate is well known in our hospitals as one of the best ways to induce a bowel movement. So if you are really constipated, a bottle of mag citrate is the way to go and they're available in every drugstore. There are multiple forms of magnesium and quite frankly, I'm not too worried about which forms are right for each of my patients. There's magnesium aspartate, there's magnesium taurate. Taurate now is getting a lot of interesting reviews for its ability to also help muscle strength and also to regulate heart rhythm. So, and that's available form of magnesium. There's also magnesium L3 innate. Now, magnesium L3 innate, number one is expensive, but number two, it actually has been shown to enter the brain more effectively than other magnesium products. So if you're looking for brain health, magnesium L3 and 8 is possibly the way to go. Finally, what do I take? I take potassium magnesium aspartate. There are multiple available on the market. I'm not going to tell you my personal favorites, but I take it twice a day, once in the morning and once at night. Again, because of my experience, almost everyone listening is deficient in potassium and magnesium. With one proviso, if you've been told you have extreme kidney failure, stage four kidney failure, renal failure, then potassium and magnesium are not for you. In fact, I actively limit potassium and magnesium in my patients with stage four renal failure. And I take care of a large number of patients with renal failure. That's the exception. And you should know whether that is possible with you. All of these things can work. I see certain patients try different magnesium products because different magnesium products work better for them. So try them out. Don't be afraid of them. They come in tablets. They come in capsules. They come in gel caps. Find one that works for you, but please give magnesium a try. 
particularly at night. It's really going to help your sleep and your mood, among other things. If you found this video helpful, I think you're going to love this one. So please, I know a whole lot about colostrum. And the idea that you are going to get any benefit from colostrum is not true.